Hi, I'm Mike with Radiant Photography, and today I'm going to be talking about the 2018 Mac Mini. Now, I ordered this Mac Mini three or four months ago as a replacement server. I have a 2012 Mac Mini in a data center in Wisconsin, and it acts as a backup server in case my primary goes offline, um, but it does really well for, for, for that purpose. Um, however, with it being six or seven years old, I figured it was time to replace it with something new. And so when the 2018 Mac Mini came out, I was pretty excited that uh, Apple had given me an opportunity to do that. When I ordered the Mac Mini, I spec'd it out for a server configuration. And so I ordered it with the i7, uh, with the 6-core six, the six i7, uh, it's the 8700 CPU. Um, and then I configured it with 32 gigs of RAM and one terabyte SSD. I also added the 10 gigabit Ethernet because I thought that was a good way to future-proof uh, network connectivity. And so um, I was pretty excited to get it in the mail and plug it in and set it up. Uh, and the thing that I learned right off the bat was that it was quite a bit faster than the 2013 Mac Pro that I that I use for for development. Um, I develop apps for a living, and so. I spend a lot of time waiting for code to compile, and and this really, uh, the new Mac Mini was so much faster. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, it really is. It, it it's fast. It, it it's noticeable when you you're sitting at it using it. Um, I benchmarked it with uh, with Geekbench, and the single core was 45 percent faster for single core operations. And for multi-core operations, it was 33% faster than, than my Mac Pro. And that's a 6-core Mac Pro versus a 6-core Mac Mini. Um, and so, really, it made a whole lot of sense for me to switch. The other thing is, is that one of the tests in Geekbench is the LLVM compiler test. And that was 50% faster on the Mac Mini um, over the Mac Pro. And so that's something that really directly affects what I'm doing all day, every day. Uh, and, and has saved me a ton of time since then. So I determined actually that I would use this Mac Mini as my desktop Mac until Apple gets around to, to updating uh, the Mac Pro with something new or maybe uh, until they, they come out with a second revision to the iMac Pro. So I've been using it for, for a while now and, and uh, so far it's, it's been a great Mac to work with. Um, I have noticed some cha some differences, and so um, the first I'll talk about is the fan noise. Now, with the Mac Pro, um, usually as long as you're staying off the GPUs, like if if you're just say even pegging the CPU with with uh, like a long compile that's just going um, using all twelve virtual cores, um, the fans the fan would not have to spool up for that. It has enough cooling in there that it, it would just hum along at its idle uh, idle noise, which is uh, next to nothing. You could hardly hear the thing. Um, it would only start spinning up the fan if you started using one or both of the GPUs um, along with like something that was processor intensive. And so and so that was it was nice because my computer was always quiet. The Mac Mini isn't always like that. Um, I would compare the Mac Mini much more to to the noise made with like a laptop, where if you start doing something processor intensive, within about 30 seconds the fans are going to start spooling up. Now there's only one fan in this Mac Mini. Uh, it's a larger fan uh, that vents in the back, and I wouldn't say that the fan itself is loud, but you still hear the air movement, and so that's I mean it is something that I noticed right away. Um, and, and I don't like it as much as Mac Pro. Obviously, less noise is better. Um, but, uh, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's a significant uh, drawback to the Mac Mini. It's just you need to know that or expect that that's the case. You're running a hot CPU in a small case. The other change is that it actually runs quite a bit hotter. I mean, if you feel the top of it, it's almost like you have a hot plate. Um, and, and so, I mean, I, it's, it's still warm now. I unplugged it 10 minutes ago. Um, and and so it's it's something that like you have to it's it's just kind of a side effect of having such a small case with with so much processing power inside is that there is a lot of heat that it has to dissipate. Um, I haven't noticed any kind of, of throttling or anything like that, and so I I wouldn't say that it's a problem. Uh, they cert Apple certainly designed it to to be within the specifications that they were going for. Um, 
And but it's just it's it's not something that I'm used to. The, the Mac Pro stayed a lot cooler in that respect. Um, but the benefit is is that the Mac Mini is a lot smaller than the Mac Pro is, and so finding a spot for it on your desk is way easier. Um, I usually just keep it behind my monitor. I don't even really look at it. It's 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 just small enough it gets tucked away, and that part of it is nice. Now. Uh, as far as speeds concerned, we already talked about it. It's 45% uh, faster at single core than the Mac Pro is, and 33% faster at multi core. So that part I absolutely love. Um, but the other part of the speed equation is, is the graphics and video processing. Um, the Mac Mini only has the integrated GPU, and so um, which is about only about a third as fast as the D500s in, in the Mac Pro. Um, so that I definitely notice, but it's not something that you notice every day. If you played games with it or something like that, you would, might notice a difference. Um, but but day-to-day -day operations, I hardly ever run into a problem with it. Um, the most noticeable time is when I'm using something like Mission Control and to select a window. I'll keep a lot of apps open, a lot of windows open. And so when it's kind of uh, displaying all of those on screen, it's not quite as but buttery smooth as it is when I do that same operation on the Mac Pro. Is that a huge deal though? Absolutely not. I mean, it's, it's still definitely quick enough that it doesn't hold me back, um, but it's just not as, as liquid smooth as, as the Mac Pro is. Um, I ha and, and I guess I should say that I uh, disclaim this by saying I have two 4K displays hooked up to this. And so it's actually pushing a lot of pixels to screen. Um, and so it, it's not like, a, I mean, if you had a, only like a, a smaller display or something that was just an HD as opposed to a 4K, um, you're probably not going to run into any problems at all, um, even in light gaming. The bigger drawback with the video is that when I have it hooked up to these monitors, I'll, I'll occasionally run into bugs with waking from sleep. And so I usually keep the the Mac on all the time, but put the displays to sleep when when it's when I'm not using it. But sometimes I'll I'll come into my office and and wake the machine up, and one or both of the displays won't wake with the machine. Like it will the the display will remain black. Um, and if it's just one, that's fine. I have a second one I can go through and actually select to reboot, and it comes back up okay. Um, but but when it's both, then it's a real hassle because then I have to log into the computer from another Mac, like from my laptop, and then then restart it, and then it will come back up no problem. Um, and so I don't know if this is caused by the displays because these are um, early 4K displays from Dell. They're the the, the P2715Q displays. Um, and so since they came out back when 4K was brand new, I, I think that they're not quite, maybe the firmware on them isn't quite uh, as modern as, as like current displays would be. Um, or it could be a driver problem. I mean, there's been plenty of times that I've seen video problems on, on Macs and stuff, and it could just be an issue with Apple's drivers. Um, and so I'm not really sure where to, to point that, the cause of that issue. Um, but it is something to know. If you do have these displays, it, it's, it's something you might occasionally run into. Um, usually maybe once a week it will, I'll have to, to reboot it and because of that reason. Um, and so I, I think I'm holding off though to buy a new, new display just because I've, I, I've, I'm waiting for the new Mac Pros to come out and I'll figure out something at that point probably. Now what about storage? Well, the storage is, is different. On this, on the Mac Mini, you can't upgrade the storage after you configure it. So you want to make sure you configure it with the amount of storage you think you'll ever need with this Mac. Um, if you are using external storage, then that's fine too. Just get the lowest 256 gig configuration and use external storage. It's The USB-C is certainly fast enough and Thunderbolt for sure um, to, to use the system in that kind of configuration. I ordered mine with the terabyte though because it's going to be acting as a server. I'm having co-located somewhere where I'm not going to be able to have an external drive um, uh, set up with it. And so I, I wanted all the storage that I would need contained in it and one terabyte would, would do well for, for what I'm using it for. Um, 
I, I will link, actually, I, I talked briefly in a, in a past video, and I'll link this above, uh, about a new 4TB uh, SSD setup that I, I, I configured for my Mac Pro. Uh, and basically with this, I, I actually moved the SSD, so now it's connected to the Mini instead of the Mac Pro. Um, the Mac Pro I'm still using because I have the, a Pegasus RAID attached to that with all of my photos and video content. Uh, and everything is hosted on that RAID. Um, and then with the SSD attached to the Mac Mini, I will basically keep just the past couple of years of, of the content I've created on there so that it's immediately accessible. The other thing I did was I purchased a Thunderbolt 2 10 gigabit Ethernet adapter. And so now when I'm connecting from the Mac Mini to the Mac Pro, I can access all the storage there and have have a really fast network access. Um, and so that's been great. Um, so every night the, the, S, the content on the SSDs, if I import photos to it, then every night that is synced over to the Mac Pro uh, and then it's backed up to uh, uh, local storage as well as Backblaze remotely. So, so that so far has been working out pretty well for me. So in conclusion, uh, I, I really highly recommend this Mac Mini. It's, it's definitely not a low-end computer anymore. I mean, you can configure it in such a wide range, but certainly if you get the i7 in it, um, it, it, really, it, it really moves. Um, and it's, and it's, it keeps up with even the high-end. I mean, the, the current Mac Pro is on sale. Um, it's, it's a stone's throw from the iMac Pro even. And so, and that computer costs twice as much. And so really, I mean, it's a, it's a really good option uh, if you're considering something, especially if you already have uh, monitors and, and everything else and you don't need that, the built-in uh, display on the iMac. Um, configure it, you can save a lot of money by configuring it with a lower amount of uh, internal storage or memory. Memory you can always upgrade later. It's, it's not a really uh, easy process, to, but you have to basically pull apart the whole machine. Um, but it really do, isn't it that big of a deal. And so if you, if you order 16 gigs of RAM now and then upgrade to the Mac 64 later on, um, then, then, then that's, that's a good way to save money too. If you have any questions about the Mac Mini, uh, be sure to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to, to answer uh, to the best of my ability. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and click the like button uh, and subscribe if you, I post a video every couple of weeks about uh, photography or technology. Again, my name is Mike. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.